Welcome back to the show. Well, there's lots of debate around yeah. Australia at the moment about co-education and the changes, but in Sydney it's gone to a whole new level. Yeah. One of Sydney's oldest boys' school, uh, Newington College, is now planning to admit girls, sparking anger and protests from parents. I'm an old boy at school, and my son is also an old boy. And the intention was always that I'd have a grandson, but I won't bring him to a co-ed school. I'm just afraid that it's all part of this sort of woke, toxic masculinity type. It's a boys' school. It's always been a boys' school. Yeah, there's a lot of emotion about this. You at home have been having your say on this story as well. Susan says, why are they so against co-ed? The world is made up of boys and girls and beyond. Well, Ali says, gee, these guys are so progressive. 1950 wants you back. Mm. Whoa. Thank you, Ali Langdon. <laughs> <laughs> Front and centre at the protest was former Newington College parent, Kerry Maxwell, and she joins us now alongside former principal, Tracy Tully. Um, first up for you, Kerry. Mm. We, we saw the emotions yesterday mm. and we found it um, kind of difficult to watch and mm. we couldn't quite comprehend why there would be so much wrapped up in this. Mm. Why is there? OK, first I want to clarify that the community is not against co-education. There are a lot of parents I've spoken to who actually went to co-ed schools. Mm. This uh, protest is directed at the headmaster and the senior council who decided one day to announce to the whole school community that they were turning the school, 160 year old traditional boys school, uh, it was going to go co-ed. Financial decision? We don't know. So there's been no consultation with the parents? There was a survey that was sent out to the parents in 2022 and we didn't hear anything more from that, so we assumed it had gone all quiet. But you say you're not against co-ed, but you're more against the decision not being made with the some decision sort of... was no, yeah. The decision we were not aware that the decision had. But, ever but been you made. don't support it though. The what we are uh, up in arms about is that the senior count the school council did not consult with the the uh, community. They did this survey and then it all went quiet. New parents who were planning to enrol had heard that potentially we mm. were going to, the school was going to be going co-ed. Mm. Current families had heard, but all the time the school denied that there was anything going on. It was always going to be so an So there needed to be school. more accountability effectively um, and, and more um, understanding of why they went through the decision making given the parents are We've paying asked. the fees. Yeah. yeah. So on the 20th of November 2023 they announced by email that they were going co-ed. Yeah. No other consultation okay. done. Well now that decision's been made, where does that leave you? What are you going to do now? There is nothing we can do. They've already decided. Are you okay with that decision now though that it's been made? No. Because so because none of the communities were consulted. It's hard to get your kid into another school too. It's very hard yeah. and because they hadn't told us. Mm. We've asked for some information and feedback as to what this yep. decision's about. People have consistently emailed the school and no one has replied. You know, um, look, we've, we both, um, you know, um, are of the same opinion, Sarah and I, that we don't really mind. My, my older kids both uh, all went mm. to um, a co-ed um, school. It's a decision mm. you make, you choose mm. where you go, and they loved it. Mm. Uh, so we don't have a problem with it. But mm. uh, Tracy, um, some parents do, uh, and we fully acknowledge that. Um, are there any real benefits um, or are there things to look out for in co-education -edu schools that may have the reverse effect? Ah, yes, thanks, and uh, good morning uh, to everyone here this morning. Look, as a, a parent of two children who went to both co-ed and private schools and as a principal of co-ed schools uh, and also a student myself of both, I think one of the biggest issues for, for many people is around communication. Mm. Co-education is a great form of schooling for uh, many reasons. And number one is the collaboration, the inclusivity, mm. number two, but communication and networking are the others. So the principal, it sounds like in this particular case, and understandably so, has failed to communicate, if that is correct, uh, if, if that is the facts. And the communication in a school is uh, one of Paramount. the things that the Australian curriculum doesn't address well. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a problem, isn't it? That's why you've got councils that, that try to address this. Mm. It's, it seems to me, too, um, you've got... Um, boys, um, you know, the girls' schools aren't really, many of them are crossing over, but it's, but it's the boys' mm. schools who are doing more of it. And, and I think boys need, I personally think boys need that interaction. Mm. Um, and uh, that's life, right? Um, but, but can you understand why parents want to keep their boys in an all-boys school? I can. I can understand. Uh, I can hear and understand what the parents are saying. My son went to uh, an all-boys school. 
for most of his uh, schooling due to bullying in a co-ed school. However, uh, I'm of the opinion here that no matter what, we need to address these issues of communication with uh, males and females students, and it's mm. going to need to start in schools. And with this particular school, the opportunity is there to fix that. Mm. And uh, there's some solutions out there that we can help with. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I went to an all-girls school, a high school, co-ed primary school. I, I, it didn't really bother me that boys weren't there. But in looking back, I don't mind that boy, if boys were at school with me. So is it going to be a difficult transition, do you think, for your son? Uh, my sons are not at the school anymore. I'm uh, an old uh, uh, moon, as they call it. Would it have been old. different? It would have been very different, yeah. yes. And I'm, I'm here today speaking up on behalf of the families who can't speak up. Their sons have been gagged at school. They're not allowed to protest. Mm. They've been told they can't speak to the press. And I know there's a lot of very, very cross parents out there who were basically sold a lie when they mm. signed up. And the fees that they've been paying for the school have been going towards surveys, consultants, overseas trips, all, all um, towards changing and transitioning mm. the school to co-ed without tell you what, um, notifying the parents. It's a yeah. red-hot mess. <laughs> it uh, is. And, and, and it Communication would have solved it. <laughs> um, but the debate is interesting too, mm. and, and we'll mm. keep going with that debate. Um, it's a fascinating one. Thank you for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thanks. We wish everyone all the very best. At the end of the day, you want your kids to have a good education. Yeah, that's right. Uh, wherever Thank that's you. coming from. Thanks for coming in. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?